Hello, happy Megan Monday. I am coming to you with sopping wet hair because previously it looked like a complete ragamuffin. And I am trying to learn the curly girl method. And so it has to completely air dry the way that I'm like practicing doing it right now. And it has all these steps and it like takes forever. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I was like, either I do this video with ragamuffin hair that hasn't been washed in Lord knows how long, or I go ahead and do it, and then it's just gonna have to be sopping wet for a while. So that's what I went with. You're getting sopping wet dreadlocks. That's cool. I'm coming to you today because it is a Monday, and prior to December of 2020, I was going, I was uploading a YouTube video every Monday for these Megan Monday episodes to keep you up to date with how I am approaching my own fitness physique goals leading up to my 40th birthday in July of 2021. So we are approximately seven months away from that event. This all If you're new here, this all started with an article that I wrote for Iridescent Women's Magazine and it is linked in the description of this video if you'd like to see how all this started. And then I did several Monday episodes outlining how I was reverse dieting because I was coming from a period of chronically under eating, which describes most of my female clients that I have ever had over, I'm going to say my 10 year career. There are a few people that overeat um, relative to their energy expenditure and it is very difficult for them to get into a caloric deficit that would allow them to lose the fat that they want to lose but let me tell you something those people in my practice are very rare by and large the people that I have seen people who need slash want to lose body fat either either medically, like it, they have been strongly encouraged for health reasons to lose some weight um, and or they just want to, they want to look different, they don't like how they feel, they don't like how their body feels, they don't like how their clothes feel, they don't feel confident, they don't feel their best, they don't have energy. Whatever the reason, by and large, the women that I work with, and this includes myself, that even have fat loss goals, it is not because they are overeating. You, you, okay, so let's talk about um, energy balance real quick before I give you today's Megan Monday update on myself. Because I'm about to enter into a two week mini cut. So that's what the topic of today's video is about mini cuts. But before I get to that, let me just reiterate for my veteran viewers and tell you freshly for my new viewers that if you were in a deficit, meaning you burned more than you consumed, you would lose weight, period. It's an equation. That is like coming out of the bodybuilding world, um, uh, sports, science, studies, like that is the measurable, quantifiable party line. If you are not losing weight, you are not in fact in a deficit. However, here's the thing. You can be eating too little food and not be in a deficit because your metabolism has slowed down such that you are not burning more than the measly calories that you were taking in. So in my practice, because this, def because this was my life, I probably attract people that are like me. So most of the women that I have worked with have been in their late 20s, 30s, early 40s and moms and trying to be fit, trying to, um, trying to look good for themselves and their husbands and for fashion and just because it's fun to look good. Um, and also trying to have more energy and trying to feel strong and empowered. Um, and so you're working out, you're going to boot camp, you're going to CrossFit, you're going to Orange Theory, you're doing, you know, programs that you find on Pinterest or online or whatever. You're doing your best to squeeze in your workout or you're a runner. A lot of women default to running because you just don't know what else to do. Um, and you can't get away from your kids usually if they're young. So you can at least pop them in the stroller or leave them with a caretaker for 20 minutes or 30 minutes while you go run. What is this? A stray. Um, so anyways, all that is to say, you can be under eating and your metabolism just slow down to the point to where it is not burning more than what you're taking in. So you're not in a deficit, even though you're eating too little, it's because you're eating too little that your metabolism has slowed down and will not allow you to burn more than that level. 
So go back and watch some of my previous Megan Mondays if you want more information about reverse dieting and about metabolism and thyroid in particular. I've talked about it in multiple episodes. They are all linked below in the description, but I'm getting to what I'm saying today. So I have been heal in a process of healing my metabolism. So even being a nutrition practitioner, a fitness coach, um, like even with all of my, and, and experimenting on myself for ever, even being all of those things, my combined professional and personal experience, I still found myself in such a place that I had been overeating for, or under eating for a very long period of time, punctuated by periods of either binges or overeating or drinking too much alcohol or wh whatever, you know, so punctuated by these periods of overindulgence, but by and large, the periods in between, lots of intermittent fasting, intentional or unintentional, just skipping breakfast because it was easier and I had a lot of people and things to take care of, not measuring any of my food and having absolutely no idea how much protein I was getting, um, being afraid of carbs for very many years, coming out of the paleo ancestral um, health paradigm, and so lots of calories missing there from that entire macronutrient. So it's just, I I've been healing. I've been systematically eating more over the last few months and I've been healing. So I worked myself up, and you can go watch that reverse dieting video, worked myself up to 2,100 calories and then I got sick of tracking. So my personality is very rebellious, fly by the seat of my pants. I do not do the same thing every day very well for very many things. Um, it's just not my jam. So the things that are super important to me that get done every single day, I've had to put systems and habits and all kinds of structures in place to make sure that I keep doing things because I just, I like spontaneity and variety. So all that being said, I tracked for a while and just to get a baseline understanding of uh, approximately how much food was 1700 calories, approximately how much food was 1800 calories, like on my plate, in my mouth, what does that look and feel like relative to my training and cooking and preparing and all that stuff. So I start, I kind of had to relearn like how much things were and I was way under, eat, I was eating way less protein than I thought I was. So I have been doing all of that for the last few months, worked myself up to 2,100 calories and then Vlogmas happened where I committed to do a video every single day in December. I did not make my goal. If you go to that playlist, there are only 14 videos I think in there out of the entire month of December. So um, by some definitions, you could say I failed at that goal, but I'm gonna do another video later this week where I'm gonna talk about how there's no such thing as failure. So stay tuned for that. Not like everybody gets a trophy, not like that kind of woo-woo business. Um, it's, it's more impactful than that. Anyways, so December happens and I'm trying to do a video a day and uh, of course all the preparations for the holiday season and Eric and I are worship leaders at our church and we had multiple events to just kind of plan for and practice for and coordinate and you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I, I still have my um, all my private clients and so we're doing check-ins. Um, weekly and they have daily access to me as well in addition through um, a voice messaging app so all that is to say I was like tracking was not important to me I was like I don't even care about putting my food in right now I'm gonna eat the same things I've been eating I'm probably somewhere I'm probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2100 calories you know because I just feel like I know what that feels like now so I have not been tracking the entire month of December so let's talk about the mini cut now this is the um the meat and potatoes, if you will, of today's video. So I feel like personally for me, I have been phoning in my activity. So I, I go for walks, I do some kettlebell swings in the garage, I'll occasionally pop into a CrossFit class at my gym. Like I teach three times a week, um, but I don't always make it a priority to go to the class, like an additional time slot in that day. Um, so like I'll pop into an CrossFit class occasionally or I'll do something at home and I'll like scale it way back or I'll do half the reps that they did or, you know, whatever. So I've just kind of been phoning in my training. Like I'm active and I'm exercising more days than not, but I'm not making any progress because I didn't want to. I didn't care. Um, so now that, that Christmas has passed, today is a Monday. So just today, if you're watching this in real time, today's December 28th, I think, um, the Monday after Christmas, this marks exactly six weeks until there is an athletic competition in Tampa that I actually did last year. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I haven't decided if I'm going to enter or not. It's really not important to me to compete anymore. Like that's sort of a season of my life that I feel like has passed. Um, 
I don't know, I just can't decide if I wanna actually do the competition or not, but the date was important to me and motivating to me. Six weeks is enough time that I can actually get some headway I made, I can make some headway, and it's also not so long that I will lose interest. So it's like six to eight weeks is kind of like the perfect amount of time to hold my interest and also actually be able to get something done. So today is the first day of the six week period until this athletic competition that I may or may not participate in, but I'm training as though I'm going to because it lights a fire under me a little bit. So I have committed to stay on the programming with my CrossFit gym five days a week. So if I miss a day and I make it up on Saturday, cool. Actually, I'll probably plan on that most weeks so that I have an off an off day or an active recovery day in the middle of the week where I'm just doing walking, maybe some maybe some running, like endurance training because I just really feel like my conditioning has suffered lately. Um, maybe I'll do some skill work that day. I'll work specifically on pull-ups or toes to bar on the rig um, or handstand walks, some of those skills that I'm trying to get better at. So I don't know, the one day in the middle I might take off of CrossFit on purpose and do active recovery and skill work and then make up the actual CrossFit workout on Saturday. So it would be six training days, one being very light intensity and then one day off completely where I only walk, but seven days a week, plan to walk, six days planned to do intentional programmed exercise that is progressively loading. So I'm not just like in the gym and messing around with a kettlebell, like I'm actually doing something that's planned and linear and each week builds upon the previous week. Like that's one, that's one of the things you pay for when you go to a cross, I mean I don't pay for it because I work there. But when you go to a CrossFit gym, like that's one of the things you're paying for is that the the training plan is done for you. You don't have to think about it and you know that it's going to be it's written in such a way that you are progressively improving over time. So, let's talk about the mini cut. With my calories, I told you I worked up to 2100 and then I quit tracking because December was just like December, you know? But I'm going to pretend like I'm still somewhere around 2100 calories and then I'm going to take 200 calories away for my cut. So that's, I did the math earlier today and now I'm forgetting what percentage that is. Sorry, I'll put it on the screen. But I don't wanna go any more than 20% of calories ever um, as a cut. So I'm just, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark and you could take 100 calories away, you could take 150 calories away, you could do a specific percentage, like 10% of calories. You can kind of cut however you want as long as it's not too drastic, but I'm choosing to just cut 200 calories a day, so I will do 1,900 calories every single day. And I, I, I always like to get no less than 100 grams of protein for women. That is like almost every woman. I like some of you are not eating anywhere near that amount and that might sound like a ton. So my clients that that describes them, I have them work up to it over time. So some of my ladies are at 65 grams right now. Some of them have worked up to 85. Some of them are like 100 and beyond. Um, so like it takes time to figure out what that looks like and how to make your meals work in that way. We call it macro Tetris. You're trying to figure out how, how do I make proteins, fats, and carbs fit in this little bucket. So it takes some practice, but you can get it eventually. It, just like anything with practice, you'll eventually get it. So personally, I don't ever wanna eat less than 100 grams of protein. At 1,900 calories, about 25% of calories is where I set my protein level, and that has me like around 115 grams, I wanna say, per day. So I'm gonna shoot for 115 as my minimum. And then 120, 125, that would be great if I hit that. Um, and then for carbs and fat, I like my fats a little higher because I personally do not like to eat modified foods. So like if I'm going to eat dairy, I want full fat, organic, yogurt, sour cream, whatever it is. Like I want it as almost as close as we can possibly get from how it came out of the cow. I'll add my own sweeteners. I'll add my own flavorings, whatever. I just want it straight up as close to nature as possible. So I don't do butter spray. I don't do turkey bacon. I don't do, I don't do fat free dairy. I don't do sugar free sugar, um, salad dressings or sugar free condiments. So I just personally make the choice for my own body, for my own health, for my own meal planning that I do not like modified foods um, in that way. So I make I make my fats and my proteins work out with natural foods best I possibly can. 
toward that end, I really need my fats to be a little higher because if you're going to include any dairy at all, it's going to be on the higher fat side. Now I can compensate for that and eat like more lean ground turkey breast and more ch more shredded like crock pot chicken um, and less salmon. Um, I eat like two whole eggs with the yolks um, every day, but I also supplement with additional egg whites. So I get more protein while um, moderating the fat from those two yolks, you know, keeping that at a certain level. If I eat regular straight up pork bacon, I'll generally have one or maybe two pieces and then those fat grams are gonna have to come out of a meal later in the day. Like I won't add avocado to my salad or I'll have one tablespoon of salad dressing instead of two or whatever. So I kind of choose like where my fats are gonna go throughout the day, but my point is I like a little bit higher fat than other macro counters or um, calorie counters or like what some of the calculators would give you because I just think it's really difficult to have low fat grams on a natural foods diet because if you're eating steak and eggs and avocado and coconut oil and all those wonderfully healthy, health-promoting, nutrient-dense foods, salmon, did I say salmon, wild-cut salmon, those things are going to include a fair amount of fat. So I wanna make sure there's room for that in my macros. All that being said, I set my fats at 40% of calories and therefore the remainder is 35% of calories coming from carbs. So you can do the math, 1900 calories are my cut calories, 25% of them are going to come from protein, which puts me at around 115 grams, 40% of those calories are gonna come from fats, and then 35% of those 1900 calories will come from carbohydrate. All in all, I'm gonna eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and try to make them as nutrient dense as I possibly can, pack as many calories into those three meals as I possibly can so that I stay full and my blood sugar stays normal. I'm gonna try to keep my fiber as close to 25 grams as possible, so that means lots of vegetables, um, and fruit, um, nuts and seeds. A lot of my carbs will come from oats and potatoes, which will have fiber. Um, so that is the plan. The thing with the mini cut is, I the last time I did a cut was for the bodybuilding show, which you can watch the video about that in my um, in my Megan Monday playlist. Um, I think I talked about it on the binge eating episode. So the last time I did a cut, it, it was not a great experience. Um, that's why I'm reversing now because I messed my thyroid and my metabolism up so much um, from doing that cut experience before. But that was 20 weeks, 20 weeks in an intentional and progressive deficit. I forget how many calories I got down to, but I guarantee you it was less than a thousand at the end. I lost my period. I was crying all the time. My skin was so dry and flaky. Like I was a dumpster fire of a mess. Okay. So I am never going back there again, but you don't have to. I can cut 200 calories a day. And if my fiber is high, my water is high, my protein is high, my vegetables are high, then I'm going to feel satisfied. I'm gonna have enough fuel to get through my workouts. I'm gonna be really regimented with my sleep. I'm gonna do this for two weeks and then I'm gonna reverse back up to 2100 because I do not want my metabolism to settle down to the 1900 level. I want my thyroid and all of the hormones that regulate my energy output, how much calories my body allows me to expend during the day. I want my body to still think that we are wealthy in fuel. We have plenty to go around. You can and keep burning the fires hot. So I want a I want a happy, safe brain that continues to keep my metabolic rate firing at the way it's firing. I'm just giving it a little bit less fuel. So I'm taking 200 calories away for two weeks, which is not long enough for there to be metabolic adaptation downward. So I should preserve the muscle mass that I have, which is one of your biggest sources of your metabolic rate, more muscle, faster metabolism, more fat burning. So I wanna preserve my muscle mass and I want my energy output to remain the same while taking in less fuel. So I'm creating a little bit of a caloric deficit. So I will keep you updated next week how that went, if I lost any weight, what my measurements were, all that jazz. Next Monday, I'll give you the full report on the one week in to the two week mini cut. And then after two weeks, I will reverse back up to 2100 for two weeks, maybe three or four. And then I'm gonna cut again. So I'm gonna do this period of mini cut, reverse back up to maintenance. Mini cut, 
reverse back up to maintenance. And so I might do two of those I'm thinking over the next six weeks before this athletic event that I may or may not be doing just to see if I can keep my training volume really high, keep the muscle mass that I have, burn a little bit of fat, get a little bit lower body weight that'll help me on movements like running and push-ups and pull-ups and all the body weight things that are just easier when you have less weight to move. So that is the plan. Let me know in the comments what you think about this concept of a mini cut. And if you have questions about how to execute it for yourself, the thing is you kind of need to have a baseline first. So if you have no idea how much you're eating now, you're going to want to track for a few days. Let me know what your comments and questions are about that either here on YouTube or over on Instagram at Megadorman underscore wellness. Thank you for being here. If you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon that'll give you notifications every time a new video goes live from me so that you will never miss an episode. Please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and thank you for being here. I will see you in the next video.